the sun had long gone down on the Nanga Parbat base camp when Sher Khan, a Pakistani climber who was resting in his tent, heard a series of gunshots. What followed can only be described with one word, slaughter. Taking the lives of 10 climbers and one cook, the Nanga Parbat massacre fills one of the bloodiest pages in alpinism history. It was June 22, 2013, and the climbing season was coming to an end. As many climbers and trekkers do every year, on that fateful night, many were resting at the Nanga Parbat base camp in Pakistan. Nanga Parbat is the ninth highest mountain on earth and it is located in the Pakistan administered region of Kashmir. The peak is the westernmost major mountain of the Himalayas, acting as the western anchor of the entire mountain range. Due to its height and fame, every year hundreds of mountaineers try to climb the Nangaparbat ridge. The camp, located at an elevation of 15,500 feet, is constantly home to several mountaineers who are attempting to summit the peak. The evening before a disaster, everything seemed to be going smoothly. And as the sun had just gone down, the climbers were getting ready to get back into their tents. The 14 climbers who were planning to tackle the Nanga Parbat Ridge in the following days and in the meanwhile were resting at the base camp were coming from all over the world, counting three Ukrainians, two Slovakians, four Chinese, one American Chinese, one Lithuanian, two Pakistani and one Sherpa, that night the base camp was a mix of cultures and languages. They were most probably in the long process of acclimatization where mountaineers have to get used to the high altitudes and rarefied oxygen by trekking or doing light climbing at high altitudes. After eating dinner, cooked by the camp cook, the 14 climbers went back to their tents, expecting a night of sleep and rest. However, the events that followed shook the entire mountaineering community due to their brutality and violence. At 10 p.m. of June 22, 2013, about 16 attackers entered the base camp, shooting numerous times in the air to wake up the climbers who were sleeping. The armed men were disguised as Gilgit paramilitary officers, a civil armed force of Pakistan tasked with law enforcement and border guard duties. The 16 terrorists came into the camp screaming, Taliban, Al-Qaeda, surrender. The mountaineers were frightened to death and no one dared to say a word, but everyone put their hands up, hoping for mercy. The attackers had reportedly gained access to this remote location by abducting two Pakistani guides. Due to the altitude and poorly maintained roads leading to it, the Nanga Parbat base camp was only reachable by foot or horseback. The 16 armed men guided by the abducted guides, walked the trails leading to base camp and walked for around five hours before reaching the tents. They were looking for money and so they ordered to give anything of value the climbers had. Interviewed for National Geographic, Sir Khan, a Pakistani climber who survived the attack, recalled one of the men saying, we know you can speak English ask them who have money in their tents. Khan continued, everybody was scared. We all said, yes, we have money. The foreigners said, yes, we have euros. Yes, we have dollars. And one by one, they took climbers to their different tents and collected the money. The terrorists were also looking for foreign climbers, probably to ask for a ransom or as an act of retaliation but everyone was too scared to talk, and so everyone was dragged out of their tents. The terrorists hauled everyone who was in the camp to an open area 
and tied the hands of the prisoners with a long rope. Climbers were crying in silence because they knew what was about to happen. According to the reconstruction given by Sir Khan in his interview, the Taliban's then ask for satellite phones. It is hard to say why, but the gunmen probably wanted to preclude any possibility of survivors calling for help. And so, after taking all the electronics they could find in the climbers' tents, they shot them, destroying any way to call for help. Sir Khan and two other climbers were untied from the rest of the group because of their religion, as they were Muslims like the Taliban's. Then, the intruders had just executed all the climbers, just sparing Khan and two others. The brutality of the killings was insane. Khan recalled how he saw a Ukrainian climber who was tied next to him laying down in a pool of blood. The leader of the group then ordered his men to stop shooting and adding to the already horrible scenario, he personally finished all the wounded alpinists with a bullet in the head. In the midst of the carnage, one of the few survivors heard an assassin proclaim, today these people are revenge for Osama bin Laden. Yet only one of the victims was an American citizen and he was Chinese-born. According to later information, the terrorists planned to kidnap Chen Honglu, the dual Chinese-American citizen, to trade him for a Taliban commander in Afghanistan. As the attack unfolded in the Nanga Parbat base camp, Chen burst out of his tent and tackled one of the militants using martial arts techniques. The militant Panicking and shooting him destroyed the main purpose of the mission, turning what was supposed to be a kidnapping into a bloodbath, taking the lives of 10 climbers and the camp cook Ali Hussein. However, some were spared, and one Chinese climber, Zhang Jingchuan, was able to flee from the attack, hiding in a trench not too far away. After the terrorists left, the survivors were able to recover one of the walkie-talkies and tried connecting with the advanced base camp located up the valley, but without success. The next morning, they were able to reach the other climbers, who were immediately evacuated, and the local authorities alerted, arriving on the massacre scene nine hours after the event. Within days of the massacre, the TTP a Sunni Muslim branch unaffiliated with the Afghan Taliban claimed responsibility for the deed. A spokesman said that the motive was revenge for the death by American drone strike that killed Wali or Remen, a Taliban commander, on May 29, 2013. Some speculate that the poorly educated and mostly illiterate villagers who carried out the killings may have viewed all non-Muslims as Westerners, making little distinction between a Lithuanian or a Slovak and the Americans who launched drones against Taliban targets. The action had been carried out by a splinter faction of the TTP called Jondal Hafsa. The Pakistan government, under its new prime minister Nawaz Sharif, appears to be making a concerted effort to round up the murderers. 16 have been identified by name and 4 arrested, but the atrocities that they committed cannot be undone. The Pakistan-administered region of Kashmir was well known for the numerous amount of Al-Qaeda-affiliated Taliban's, but never in history terrorism was brought to the mountains. The attack on Nanga Parbat was also a blow to the mountaineering community, which has long seen the Himalayas as a symbol of peace and friendship between nations. Despite the tragic events of that day, the mountaineering community has continued to persevere 
in its effort to explore and conquer the world's greatest peaks. Nanga Parbat, which is also known as the Killer Mountain, due to its deadly reputation, remains a popular destination for climbers who are drawn to its stunning beauty and challenging terrain. However, the memory of the 2013 attack continues to loom large over the mountain and the mountaineering community.